Alright guys, so recently I had the opportunity to go to Bermuda with my lovely wife and experience the culture, the food, the agriculture, uh, and just the atmosphere that is Bermuda. So I thought it'd be really cool just to share those experiences with you and uh, run you through a two-part series that's going to be on my channel. So make sure you stay tuned in the coming weeks for the second part. Uh, there's going to be some incredible things to show you. And hopefully it inspires you as much as it inspired me during my stay in Bermuda. But let me share with you the first day that we had on the island. All right, so after settling into the beautiful Rosewood Tucker's Point, Rachel and I had the unique opportunity to meet up with a local farmer uh, by the name of Tom Watson, who of course owns Watson's Farm. And uh, he took us around the farm, gave us a, a really beautiful tour of what he does, his operations. He employs about 11 or so other Bermudians, and they're all dedicated to sustainable farming, uh, humane livestock handling, and uh, just quality, you know, quality stuff. After just a few minutes of walking through the farm with Tom, you could get a really good sense of how much passion and love goes into what he does. One of the things he told me is that he's not only Bermudian, but he's fiercely Bermudian, which means that he's really involved in the community and making sure that he represents Bermuda as best as he can. And that rubs off a lot. It almost tugs at your heart a little bit, especially as a chef. So. It was an amazing experience, uh, but I also got to meet up with Doug Sisk, who's gonna cook me a dinner later on with some of the ingredients that I picked up at Watson's Farm. But once we're done here, we're gonna head right on over to the Honeybee House. Once we got to the bee house, uh, we had a nice little class with Randolph Ferbert, who basically taught us everything you can know about honeybees. It's pretty incredible the importance of honeybees in the world. Not to geek out or anything, uh, but a third of the food on your table is the direct or indirect result of bee pollination. And as a chef, I think it's something that's very valuable to understand. Uh, so we just took a tour of the property, checked out the honeybees, and of course bought some delicious honey that they make right there on the honeybee farm. But once we're done here, it's off to a beautiful cruise and a three-course Bermudian-inspired lunch. Once aboard the incredible sanctuary, we were met by a lovely chef by the name of Samantha Crew, who as soon as we got on board, popped champagne and started preparing our three course lunch. First up were these insanely delicious fish cakes that she actually made from grouper that they caught the day before. Um, she paired it with a coconut and spicy aioli, some sliced scallions, and some freshly sliced cucumber. It's just a great dish, very well rounded, and I love the textures and the flavors. Next up was a very cool twist on a Caesar salad. She used uh, some local mixed greens uh, with uh, braised chicken, some freshly shaved Parmesan cheese, fried sweet potato instead of croutons, and a really delicious light anchovy vinaigrette. Last but not least, the dessert was absolutely amazing. Uh, she served a hibiscus jam with a vanilla panna cotta and a raspberry macaroon. And to Chef Samantha, it really embodied the color palettes uh, that she saw in Bermuda. That it was a great dish and again another well-rounded locally inspired dish that hit on all cylinders and was absolutely incredible. We had such a blast on the sanctuary but we still have one more culinary adventure to end our first day in Bermuda. Later that night I met up with the executive chef of the Reefs Resort Doug Sisk, who actually met earlier that day um, at the farmer's market. He used all the ingredients that we picked up at the farmer's market, and he even used some of the honey that we picked up at the honeybee house, which was pretty cool to see utilized in a pumpkin puree. I thought it was fantastic. He paired that with a fun take on risotto. Um, instead of using risotto rice, he used uh, the, the grain farro and just mixed in a little bit of cream, butter, parmesan, some garlic and onions, and I thought that was a really fun take on risotto. Uh, he sauteed up a little bit of collard greens with some garlic and onions as well, and uh, he broke down the chicken into two ways, which I thought was very unique. He made this uh, chicken ballantine, which I used to make all the time um, in culinary school and a few different restaurants. It's essentially just a stuffed chicken leg with some of the breast meat and other various parts of the chicken, almost rolled up like a sausage and then seared off really crispy. He also utilized the breast, seared that off with a little bit of herbs, um, some olive oil and some garlic, a little bit of lemon, and that was just so delicious. And of course he drizzled this wonderful au jus of chicken right over the top just to finish off everything and bring the whole dish together. I had such a wonderful time my first day in Bermuda and Doug Sisk really just represents what this island represents. 
and that's passion, connecting to your community, and really just doing what you love and doing it well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the future soon with some Bermuda inspired recipes and of course part two of our Bermuda adventure. Also, before you go, make sure you check out some of my other YouTube friends. Uh, they visited Bermuda and have a whole host of experiences on the island, and I'm sure you'll enjoy their perspective as well. So check them out, and you'll see more beautiful Bermuda. Bermuda.